everyone and welcome to episode one of my Aesthetics with Erin series. In this series I will not only look like an A24 character but I will combine my longtime love of writing craft with a newfound love of fashion and design to show you how you could create characters and their arcs using aesthetics. In every episode I'm going to combine one or more element of fashion with one or more element of writing and today is the introductory episode where I'll do a quick dissection of a popular aesthetic to demonstrate theme and then in the next episode using what we learned we are going to go step by step together creating our own character aesthetic using my journal prompts and exercises. But first if you haven't checked out my last video it's very aesthetically pleasing. It's my short titled The Goofy Friend and I wrote, directed, acted, co-edited did, did, did it and I even went out of my comfort zone and hired a cinematographer and an editor and I'm really proud of it so thank you to everyone that shared and commented it made me really really happy <sighs> and that was me self-promoting um although I realized recently that not promoting something that you worked really hard on and that you're really proud of is a form of self-sabotage and we don't do that anymore so go check it out and now on to how we can add some seasoning to our characters and our stories when building an aesthetic, you want to ask yourself a few things. What is the tone of your story? What feelings do you want to create in your audience? And what types of settings, clothing, objects, and colors convey that? And an easy place to start is theme. According to the Young Prophets Guide, aka Wikipedia, in contemporary literary studies, a theme is a central topic, subject, or message within a narrative. Themes can be divided into two categories. A work's thematic concept is what readers think the work is about, and its thematic statement is what the work says about the subject. I personally like thinking of this with the iceberg visual, where the plot is the tip of the iceberg and the theme is everything underneath it. So your theme is the thing that you're trying to explore through this plot and through these characters. Now let's look at the themes in my current hyperfixation, Cottagecore. On aesthetics.fandom.com, Cottagecore, also known under the name Farmcore or Countrycore, is an aesthetic inspired by a romanticized interpretation of Western agricultural life. It is centered on ideas around a more simple life and harmony with nature. Certain themes associated are the survival of the environment, food, and caring for people. My favorite example, especially if we're taking finances into account, is Miss Honey from Matilda. But Little Women, especially Greta Gerwig's adaptation of Little Women, is a wonderful addition. Other themes include solitude and isolation, rejection of modern ways of living, finding warmth and safety and femininity, the desire to escape, sometimes the idea of purity, innocence, or connecting with one's inner child, and oftentimes gay yearning. Gay adjacent yearning, curious yearning, forbidden yearning, Forbidden yearning that turns into can't resist yearning. And not necessarily yearning, but if the opportunity presented itself, we could adjust said yearning accordingly. And while your character's personal aesthetic does not have to be an offshoot of your story's aesthetic, i.e. the movies and TV shows where we have the friend group with the preppy one, the sporty one, the e-girl, each character can have their own aesthetic and exist within a larger one. However, if your story or character doesn't deal with, say, cottagecore themes, it wouldn't make sense to use this aesthetic unless the contrast in theme and aesthetic heightens and transforms the narrative. A great example is Ari Aster's Midsummer or Midsommar. I'm not entirely sure which one it is, but it's a horror psychological drama with themes of deceit and betrayal. This film uses our expectation that bad things live in the dark against us by setting the most disturbing scenes in broad daylight with aesthetics that typically symbolize purity, childlike innocence, freedom, and safety, and filling scenes with lush greenery and flowers, which symbolize good fortune and celebration. This visual betrayal and contrast transforms the original aesthetic and now not only makes it unsettling but unreliable thus producing suspense it's fucking brilliant Ugh, i love that 
All right, guys, that's all that I have for you for episode one. Episode two will be much longer <laughs> and much more like nerdy and niche, but at this point, that's just my brand. Uh, make sure that you check out the Goofy Friend with the link in the description, or it's just my last video, and make sure you share and tag people. I'm trying to be the protagonist in the coming of age movie. I wanna be on Euphoria, and I don't care who knows it at this point. So <laughs> make sure you go and check that out. And tell me in the comments below what aesthetic you're using for your story. And I will see all of you lovely people. Stay safe. <laughs> I will see all of you lovely people in my next video. Bye.